Hi guys, in this video we'll go through the steps to download, run and test an example ASP.NET Core 2.2 API that supports role-based authorization. The example API is from this tutorial that I posted recently. There's a link to it in the video description so you can follow along. We'll be going through the steps in the tutorial to get the example API up and running locally and then we'll test it with the Postman HTTP client. I'm using a Mac to take you through these steps but everything I'm showing will work fine on Windows or Linux as well. Before we start, there's a few things you'll need installed on your machine to be able to run, develop and test the API. First, to run the API, you'll need the .NET Core SDK installed. The SDK includes the .NET Core runtime and the .NET Core command line tools that we'll use to start the API. To install the .NET Core SDK, go to this link and follow the instructions. To develop .NET Core applications, you'll also need a code editor. Personally, I like Visual Studio Code, but any editor will do, as long as it supports .NET Core development. If you are using VS Code, make sure you install the C-Sharp extension, which adds support for .NET Core and C-Sharp. To install VS Code and the C-Sharp extension, go to these links and follow the instructions for each. To test the API, we'll be using the Postman HTTP client. To install Postman, go to this link and follow the instructions. Okay, once you have everything installed, you can download or clone the API code from GitHub. To get the URL for the Git repo, follow this link, click the green clone or download button, and then click this icon to copy the URL. I'll be using the Git CLI to clone the repo, but you can also download a zip file of the project or open in GitHub desktop if you prefer that, or if you don't have the Git CLI installed. To clone with the git CLI, open a new command line window and cd into the folder where you want to clone the project. I'll be using a folder named projects. Enter the command git clone and paste in the URL to the repo and hit enter. Once you've downloaded the code, cd into the new project directory, enter the command .NET run, hit enter and then wait a few seconds for the API to start up. Once it's started, you should see the message that the application started and that it's listening on localhost port 4000. Now we can test our API, API, so open up Postman. The first thing we need to do is hit the authenticate route so we can get a JWT auth token that we can then use to access other secure routes on the API. So enter the URL localhost on port 4000 slash users slash authenticate. Change the request method to post, select the request body tab, change the format to raw and the content type to JSON. In the request body, enter a JSON object with the properties username and password. Now if we jump back quickly, quickly to the tutorial, scroll down a little bit and go to the user service, we'll see that in the example API we have two hard-coded users, one in the admin role and one in the user role. Now for our, our testing we'll be using the admin user because they have full access to all of the other secure routes in the API. So going back to Postman, enter the username admin and the password admin and click send. Okay, something's gone wrong. I've mistyped the URL. Localhost so should be localhost. Then click send. Okay. Now down in the response you should see the admin user details and a JWT auth token in the response. So highlight the token and copy it to the clipboard. This indicates that the authentication was successful. Next we'll test getting all user records from the secure users route. So open up a new tab, enter the URL localhost 4000 slash users. Now go to the authorization tab, set the authorization type to bearer token and paste 
the JWT token into the token field and click send. All right, you should see an array of all the users in the system, which is our admin user and normal user that we saw hard coded in the user service. We can also get the details of an individual user by adding the ID to the end of the URL. So you can see ID one is admin, ID two is the normal user. And to test that the authentication is actually working, if we switch the authorization type to no auth and try to hit the route, we'll see that the body is empty and the status is 401 unauthorized. Okay, that's it. I hope you found the video helpful. Thanks for watching.